everything you need to know about the first seven years of the apocalypse. Okay, first thing you need to know, the apocalypse of the Lord Jesus lasts 14 years. That's correct, 14 years. Um, the king sits as king of kings and lord of lords, an interval of three and a half years. You have the seals, three and a half years. You have the trumpet judgments, three and a half years. You have the bowls, three and a half years. Three and a half times four is 14, 14 years. Okay, now let's uh, go through this. And if you're unfamiliar with the message on this channel, many of these things I've talked about at great length, any of these topics that um, are new to you, um, look up the videos and you'll see that I've already described them in great detail. But here is a summary and a quick snapshot and we're gonna go through all of it. Um, let's go through some definition of terms. Um, it's, uh, let me just move it here just a little bit so you can see some things. All right, first and foremost, during this period um, is the coronation of the king and the setting of the angels in heaven for three and a half years, after which there are the seals, and the book of Revelation calls them seal judgments, okay? Um, during the first four, the Lord Jesus describes them as the beginning of sorrows. Um, and beginning there in Greek is arche, and arche is where we get archangels. So the uh, horse riders are archangels. Then um, he said, after the tribulation of those days, uh, you will see the Son of Man come in the clouds. Well, the tribulation of those days is the sixth seal. Okay, so that's, again, definition of terms. Tribulation is the sixth seal. Um, then he says, Daniel's 70th week is not on this sheet, but there's a period of the great tribulation. And that would then begin the trumpet and bowl judgments. Okay, so definition of terms, we have that covered right all right good now uh let's talk about this period where the lamb reigns this is critical 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 you understand the book of esther chapter one the king reigns um and he is seated as king for three years and then he holds a feast of 180 days well that's three and a half years that's exactly what we see right here then what happens is he calls vashti and she refuses the king's command, okay? Um, when she refuses the king, we go into the seals, all right? Now, let's talk about the king. He sat as king and kings. This, when did that happen, Leland? That happened in September 22nd, 2010. All these intervals here, guys, are the 180 days are prophetic days. Half of a 360 day prophetic year but we convert that to 182 to add the solar days. Now all these intervals, according to the Enoch calendar, is month one, day one. Month seven, day one. That's what all these dates are. So it started in September 22nd, 2010. Then the king sits and he reigns. And you see that in uh, Revelation chapter four. Um, and then you also see him crowned and given garments in Zechariah 3. Um, he's a type of Joseph, who is second in command to the Pharaoh. And there are what? 14 years. Seven good years, seven bad years. These are the seven good years. Okay? Um, it's also the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble is what? 14 years. He's got seven. He's got to serve seven for one wife and seven for another wife. 14 years. Uh, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. We see that in Psalm 110, verse 1. And he sits as ancient of days in Daniel 7, verse 9, um, which also lines up with the 24 elders sitting as thrones in Revelation 4. Okay? I've given for you all the verses that go in to describe the seven church angels. We see their role in Esther chapter 1 as they bring the bride, uh, the queen, to the king. Again, she is Vashti, she refuses the king. But all these other are the coronation and seats of all the angels that will uh, participate later in the apocalypse with various roles, okay? Now, let's talk about Vashti refuses the king's command. So what happens after three and a half years that just took place right there, the king is angry. And he is angry for two and a half years. The two and a half years continues this interval 
of 180 days. These are the seal judgments. So you have the white horse rider, red horse rider, black horse rider, pale horse rider, the altar of souls. Then what happens? It's I don't have it here, but the seventh seal is only a half hour. So that means the sixth seal is a year. So now what you have is two and a half years for uh, the first five. And year six is a full year, totaling three and a half years of the time of the seals. Okay. All right. Now, what happens here? I've done my best to show you the eclipses. He said uh, there would be um, signs in the heavens. Okay. So that's what we're observing here. All the different signs of the heavens, what do they mean? Well, um, when we have the blood moons, those blood moons are these 180 day intervals. Now, on a, um, so let's look at them real quick. Let's go through this, guys. April 15th, 2014. That was the first of the lunar tetrad, or four blood moons. Okay. Then you have 176 days, and the next one was October 8th, 2014. The next one was April 4th, 2015. Well, that was 178. So um, added together, it's a lunar year, which is 354 days. That is not 180 days. So those must be keep calibrated according to the Enoch calendar, which would give us intervals of 182 days. Okay, And that's what we've given you here. Is all these dates are intervals of 182 days per the Enoch calendar. Okay, now let's talk about um, Matthew 24. This is the foundation of what we're going on. That is, um, you know, the disciples asked the Lord in the beginning part of Matthew 24, what, you know, when, you're, when the Son of Man comes, what, what's the last days? He said, well, take heed that no man deceive you. That's deception. Well, that relates to the white horse rider. Okay, then you hear of wars or rumors of wars. Well, that re relates to the red horse rider. He holds a sword. Um, there will be famine in those days, and that relates to the black horse rider holding the scales. There will be pestilence, and that's the pale horse rider who also has a sword. Um, and, they, and these are angels that go about bringing judgments. And then he talks about persecution. And you can see clearly right here, in uh, March 16th, 2016, began the fifth seal. This is where we are right now, the altar of souls. So the altar of souls, guys, is terrorism in general but specifically isis who is killing christians this is exactly fulfilling the souls under the altar that cry out to god for um witness and testimony so uh in general we consider that terrorism okay um now the other thing that happens during this period is the two major players are on the scene in daniel chapter 8 um it tells us about a little horn now this little horn we consider it as a forerunner. It's not the Antichrist. It's a forerunner to the Antichrist. And it's Obama. Um, what happens is he comes towards the four spirits of the heavens. These are the horse riders. So he really takes his role, guys, since um, the blood moons. That's when he's on the scene. Also, the Lord said um, there will be many false prophets and false teachers. Well, um, what we consider there is that same word, false prophet is we find in the book of revelation and so revelation 13 talks about the lamb that speaks as a dragon so it's code the lord is giving us that the false prophet would be on the scene at the time of that description and that's matthew 24 verse 11 so that is pope francis so we have the two players on the scene in the time of the seals um at this point obama is not the antichrist okay but he is a forerunner figure Okay, now uh, let's continue and observe this pattern. So we have the four blood moons. Then what happens in the last two, you have a solar eclipse preceding a lunar eclipse two weeks ahead. So another solar eclipse two weeks ahead of a lunar eclipse. Now this pattern continues. Solar eclipse uh, two weeks ahead of a lunar eclipse in the spring of 2016 and also in the fall of 2016. September 1st is a solar eclipse. September 16th is a lunar eclipse. So all these intervals directly correlate and line up with the seals. Okay? So each one is ushering in a seal. 
So there's uh, six um, uh, directly, uh, one after another, every um, spring and fall feasts. Okay, so every feast is an interval of prophetic 180 days, but uh, we have to add the solar days. There's two solar days in six months, so that's 182 days. Now, this is all of this is so critical that you understand. I can't emphasize enough. Um, one of which is Esther's year. You have to get this. Esther does have a year of preparation. So what happens is in those five seals, there's a solar eclipse in the last four that's directly ahead of a lunar eclipse. That pattern continues, but it alternates between a solar eclipse preceding a blood moon. So what happens is a lunar eclipse then precedes a solar eclipse. So we have a lunar eclipse coming in August 18th, 2016. That's two weeks ahead of a solar eclipse, March 1st, 2016. Okay, that pattern continues. And then February 11th, there's a lunar eclipse. And then two weeks later is a solar eclipse. Same thing in August 8th, 2017, two weeks ahead of August 21st, 2017. So what we are observing is Esther's year of preparation. Okay, yes, it's a literal year. Yes, there is an Esther. Right now, there is no bride. So we need a queen. So this is the time that, um, as on this channel, you know, we're gathering the Virgin to Shushan to prepare to get Esther ready. It's one year, okay? That begins in August 28, 2016. All right, now remember, we're doing 182 days, but it says six months of myrrh and six months of sweet odors. These are literal dates I'm giving you of these things that are going to transpire. And it ends August 27, 2017, okay? The other sign of this is the Star of Bethlehem. Happened twice. June 30th, 2015. And it's going to happen again. August 27th, 2016. That's the day before Esther's year of preparation. It's a literal year. Then after that, Esther's prepared and the king will come. The purpose of this video is not to give you rapture dates. No man knows the day of the hour. I'm showing you all the events that have happened, that are going to happen, um, that all the scriptures must be fulfilled. Okay, and then you can see here, August 22nd, 2017, begins the Great Tribulation. Uh, we know that by the woman clothed with the sun. That happened twice. Um, happened in September 29th, 2011, and it's going to happen again, September 22nd, 2017. The interval between those two dates is, between them now, is 2,184 days. That is exactly 364 days times six years gives you 284 so that's why you need the enoch calendar that's the only one that will track these dates specifically let's talk about the sixth seal the sixth seal guys um is very clear that the lord jesus says after the tribulation of those days that's the sixth seal we talked about the beginning of sorrows that is the time period of the horse riders um the sixth seal he said, is the tribulation. It is not the great tribulation. He defined that as Daniel's 70th week. It is different. Okay. These, all these things are very important for you to understand. Then what he says is the sun shall be turned to sackcloth. The moon shall be turned to blood. You see the same thing in Revelation chapter 6. Um, when it talks about the sixth seal, these are identical descriptions. So there are seven things I've listed right here that make it very clear that the Lord comes during the sixth seal. Okay, he, then he says, the stars will fall from heaven. Um, he says, the tribes of the earth will mourn. In Revelation, it says, the uh, kings will hide in the dens and the rocks and the mountains. He said, he will gather the elect from the um, four winds of heaven. In Revelation, we find the 144,000 are sealed. So yes, the 144,000 are Esther. They are the wise virgins. They are the woman in uh, Song of Solomon, chapters 3 and 4. Um, the unwise virgins or the great multitude is those that are Vashti, those that are the Song of Solomon woman of chapters 5 through 8, um, and the unwise virgins. There are two people groups, guys. Then he describes the four winds of the heavens, okay? You find that in Revelation. Um, don't blow the winds until we've see, sealed the servants on their forehead. The Lord Jesus describes, heaven and earth will pass away. My words will not pass away, but um, he talks about 
just before that, he talks about the parable of the fig tree. Yes, the fig tree um, is also described in um, Revelation chapter 6, um, where it talks about the fig tree shaking her figs. Uh, all those descriptions, all seven, clearly define that the Lord comes as the Son of Man during the tribulation of those days, which is the sixth seal. Um, other things that are not on this are uh, Daniel's timeline, uh, describes in other videos I have this that Esther has 390 days. Uh, this relates to Ezekiel chapter 4. Okay, another thing that we have here for you is these years. Okay, so you can see year 48, year 49, year 50. Now, what happens is Esther gets her own year. So, year 49 is Shemitah, year 50 is Jubilee. Then you have Esther's year of preparation. Uh, six months myrrh, six uh, months of sweet odors. Then begins year one of the next cycle, which is the Great Tribulation. Uh, this is proven by Isaac Newton's interpretation of uh, Daniel, where it talks about uh, there'll be seven weeks and 62 weeks. So from June 7th, uh, 1967, you take seven times seven times 360 days. You come to September 23rd, 2015. Now, if you take 50, you come to September 17, 2016. That would then begin uh, the time period of Esther's year of preparation. So, the, uh, so that gives you all of the information on what's taking place. We're in seven good years, even though there are judgments, even though there are isolated um, wars. There are rumors of wars. So it's not the big one. Even though there's famine and pestilence, and it's isolated, but it's all going to go down. It's going to be the worst days of mankind, and it's all going to happen in the fall of next year, guys. But there is, the Lord is coming. He's coming for a remnant. He's calling for a small number, um, but she has to get ready first, okay? So um, most of your questions will probably be on this channel already. Um, all you have to do is just anything here is new. Uh, just go over the uh, videos in the channel and you'll see that I've already covered this all at great length. I'm just doing one video to summarize. Okay. Um, God bless you and to God be all the glory and honor and power and dominion for this information that he would make it clear to us to what is the day and the hour.